Welcome back for today's review of A Sister's All You Need. Now, this anime series had got, got something of a reputation online for a scene that I will insert here of uh, the main character eating panties. Now, it should be made very clear that this is a fantasy sequence from the first episode where the main character is pitching a story concept to his editor and the editor is saying no no way no uh -uh, we're not going to do this no this is a terrible idea it is a really goofy over the top concept because the main character has a fetish for little sisters a fetish that he does not carry over into real life i should point out in, in the sense that he does not act on this in real life um, but he just loves the, the, the little sister idea, and he's very much a, an otaku for that, that idea, and he's trying to work its way into every story. What the show is actually about, though, as it turns out, is it's about writers. It's about a group of, of a handful of writers, all of them light novel authors, and their various frustrations, and generally they hang out in the protagonist's room and frequently play board games and card games, actually. One of the neat things about this is that you will actually see them playing board games and card games that you can buy, and I've played some of them, uh, 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 personally. And so it, it's kind of sort of a, an ad for card games in its own way. Turns out it's also, <coughs> excuse me, probably an ad for alcohol. They drink beer pretty much every night. Uh, sometimes wine, and that gets featured in the show, and it looks like a, um, a brewery was a, um, one of the sponsors of the show. But fundamentally, it's about folks hanging out and dealing with the frustrations of their business, of their line of work, right? That you have to produce this material and how hard that is sometimes. Which is interesting because they tend to work in the light novel world, and as you may know from being familiar with this whole thing. Light novels are sort of anime-style novels. So they're, it's actual, you know, text. But they tend to be about, you know, um, <clears throat> uh, beautiful fantasy characters and ridiculous sci-fi concepts and the kind of thing that you can easily adapt into anime or, or into a manga. So it has this pop feel to it. But the characters are actually dealing with their, their, their issues. Of, of all that. And then you get some other side characters as well. The animation in general is uh, definitely effective and gets across what needs to, to get across. The animation quality is quite consistent throughout the entire uh, run of the series. There are not noticeable periods where the quality dips you know, halfway through or things along those lines. And that said, it is basically about, again, characters sort of hanging out in a guy's bedroom. So there's nothing really um, involved or complex in the in the animation. There are a few sequences, though. Uh, one of the one of the cool things is that they also adapt scenes from the novels the characters are writing, and scenes from the games they're playing. So there's one episode where they play a D and D style uh, a tabletop role playing game, and so you you get fully animated sequences of their characters in this fantasy world, you know, interacting with the weird stuff that kind of comes up in a typical D&D session. Which is a lot of fun. Uh, so the animation is, again, effective for all of that, and um, I certainly didn't uh, have any issues with it. Um, but it didn't really blow me away much of the time. The overall direction of the show is similarly effective, but not masterful. <clears throat> Part of the problem is that it is a, a relational show, so it's kind of hard to be amazing with how you <clears throat> arrange the art and the visuals of a show in a show where everyone's just talking. It can be done. I've seen it done. But this is one of those shows where, okay, it's just you know shots of characters talking, which is not the only thing they do, but it's... <clears throat> It's directed very competently, and I don't mean that as a as a slap down. It just it works, and you know, you know, no complaints. You know, uh, fine, good job there. I will say there are certainly moments where the the camera does linger on certain things or does cut to certain moments 
that reveal elements of what a character is thinking, what a character, what's going on in a character, without having them actually say it. Uh, this is a show in which the characters are often thinking different things than they're actually saying, and that is communicated well through the direction and what the director chooses to show the audience. So good job there. Now, a show like this does live and die on its characters. <clears throat> I actually find the characters in here was, were, is particularly a strong suit of the show. As long as you sit back and realize it's an anime series. Uh, it is, and it is a... <clears throat> it's an anime series clearly aimed at otaku, but it's not trying to be particularly deep or complicated. Or complex. This is a story of <clears throat> characters who are fundamentally friends, and seeing how that friendship works out in their life, in their lives, what that does for them, which I think is a really uh, an interesting concept, and I think does come across well in the characters. The archetypes are, are essentially there, but these are multidimensional characters. They have goals that they're trying to accomplish, and what they say and what they do are <clears throat> part of that and are, are, reflect those aspects of their personality and you see where sometimes their personality and what they're expected to do clash and especially in the case of the main character and what he has to deal with and that I, I really found um, interesting and effective. I, I think they, they did a, a fine job of, of expressing that. I should point out the main character is kind of a slacker and you do see how that impacts his life. Um, he is not a slacker for the entire anime series, though. And so it's not as frustrating as you it can be in some of these shows where, you know, slacker character is slacker for 12 episodes. And it's like, uh, just, just stop it, right? That does get addressed uh, to a certain extent. I should also point out there is one character who is constantly um, suggesting very sexual acts of the main character, but is doing so essentially in jest. Uh, she is joking about it pretty much the entire time. She is romantically attracted to the main character, uh, but she is basically kidding him with this the whole time. She's getting under his skin. This is the kind of thing that really bugs him. And so it's like friends who do that a lot. So you gotta, you know, the character initially seems either you know, way out of line or, well, just way out of line. <laughs> uh, and you're just like, why would you have a character like that? Once you see how their personalities work with each other, especially over the first two or three episodes, it fits. It, it makes sense. Um, so I think that, you know, that, that kind of works again, just kind of be aware of that. The overall uh, sort of tone of the series in terms of you know, kind of believability is it's it is firmly in this otaku slice of life you know um world where aliens don't invade spoiler alert um you, you know characters don't in in the actual show you know pull things out of hammer space they sometimes do in the you know the scenarios that they write but you know it is grounded in the real world but the characters themselves are often somewhat over the top in their personalities. You'd be hard pressed to find several of these characters in the real world. Um, <clears throat> I don't really have a, you know, a, a favorite character in the show. That's kind of not how my, my, my mind works. And they, they were interesting in different ways. Uh, I, I definitely appreciated the, the different ways that those characters were, were assembled. So yeah, you, you're not going to find anything. And it's one of the, the neat things about the show actually is that while you will not find any variations from normal daily life in their reality, because they're writing these fantasy stories and because they're playing these board games, you get a lot of that fantasy in the show anyway, right? So that, that works cool uh, in a very effective way. Um, do you want to mention voice acting? I watched this with the Japanese dub. Um, I found the voice of the main character kind of grating. He has that slightly nasally kind of kind of a voice to him which I, I, I 
understand was a choice, but I think was a an ineffective choice for the protagonist of your show. I just found it to be a difficult voice to talk to listen to over the long term from a, you know, a main character. Uh, overall, I think the you know the female characters were well done. They're very anime voices, right? They they especially the, the female voices sound rather fake. They they sound like okay, we're doing a high pitched anime voice. Uh, but, you know, the emotional tones are there, the, the, the fundamentals of the show are there. They just don't really sound like Japanese girls I actually hear talking on, you know, documentaries, things along those lines, right? It, it's, it, it's, an, it's an anime. It is definitely an anime series. So, overall, I, you know, I was tuned, turned in, I was, eh, somebody recommended this show to me. Probably because I, I, I'm an aficionado of board and card games. Very amateur. And then, oh, you should check this out because they hang around and play board and card games a lot. And I found myself marathoning the series. It was just a really fun, light, entertaining show in that sense that it's... They do a few over-the-top things for comedic effect. But overall, they're telling a story about people working and trying to deal with working, trying to deal with the frustration and the stress of your job. Um, it, exactly. It, it's, it's, it's a little like Comic Party or Genshin, but more, a little more down to earth, a little more grounded than those shows. And I just found myself enjoying it. It's a little bit like a box of chocolates, right? It's not particularly nourishing, um, but it's definitely filling and it's very tasty. And there are moments, I, I should... I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention. There are moments of character development. There are moments where... There are moments of relational philosophy. Where folks talk and think about what they want out of life and what, what they want out of other people and how that's not necessarily working out the way they want it to. And about how that's life. Right? So there are some... There's a little more depth to this show than it would appear at first glance, and especially <laughs> given that opening sequence, which is just so ridiculous. So if you can get past that, that sequence and realize how bonkers it is, um, you know, dive deep and you're going to find something that um, I found just quite entertaining. So I hope you find that useful, and I hope to see you in the next review, and I hope uh, next, uh, or until then, I hope you will dig deeper into your own favorite works.